This position actually happened in a game between two international masters in a classical tournament game. And these were the best moves. So how exactly did this happen? Let's find out. This is a game played between two international masters, Sean Rodrigue Lemieux and Vion Bidyarti. White played knight f3 first, the ready opening, and black played e6, playing in a queen's gambit declined fashion. Pretty solid. White opts for a Catalan setup. And black just simply develops. And this now, after d4, is transposed into a Catalan. Magnus has been using this recently a lot. Black plays the pretty solid triangle system against this uh, Catalan setup. But the only problem is this bishop on c8 is pretty passive. White plays knight bd2 and e4, trying to fight for the center. Black continues the development of bishop b7. And I think black might be ready to play c5 now, opening the bishop. But before that happens, white plays a really good couple of moves. e5, gaining space, pushing the knight back, and now c takes d5. After c takes d5, black's bishop is bad. And we have kind of like a bad French defense position for black. In fact, I had this position as white against an IM. And I think the game was a draw a couple of years ago. So here, white plays rook e1. Good move because sometimes black will try to break in the center with f6, but now the rook will is already on a potential open file. Black plays rook c8, hitting the queen, and white goes queen d1. And now black plays queen c7, trying to go queen c2. Now white plays an interesting regrouping move. Knight b1, opening the bishop, as well as preventing queen c2, because then white could take and play knight c3, trapping the rook with the bishop later. So instead of queen c2, black plays b5. Makes a lot of sense. White's going to attack where he has more space on this side, and black's going to attack where they have more space on the queen side. White plays bishop f1. This bishop is no longer useful here, so it's better on the d3, h7 diagonal. The computer doesn't exactly like this maneuver. Maybe it wants to develop the other pieces first, but its position is still fine for white. Queen c6 trying to go bishop a6. Bishop g5, a good move. This is black's good bishop. And this also gives white some momentum. Already attacking this pawn. Black plays g6. And now the computer wants to focus on developing the knight or playing a3 or queen e2. But Sean here goes for the, the kill. Queen g4, swinging the queen over to go for a quick like at mating attack, essentially. Black tries to trade off the bishops, and that happened, and white just goes for it. Queen h3, threatening mate. Black has to play h5. Now g4, trying to break this pawn. Black defends with knight g7. The thing is, white is attacking with only a knight and a queen, and black has enough defenders, and the fact that these pieces are undeveloped is the reason why white's attack is not fully going to be successful. So white plays knight d2 here. Queen b6, hitting this pawn. Knight f3. So white is really trying to bring ammunition to the king side, but in the the downside of that is that the queen side is now completely empty. So black is trying to create counterplay there. So it's gonna be exciting. One person is going all in on the king side. King h1, trying to bring the rook in here. This was just so complicated. I don't even think Stockfish's analysis is fully correct because there's so many sacrifices that you're gonna see. Rook f c8, that makes sense. Rook g1, bringing the rook in. Knight f8, just again, Black's bringing some defenses in. Takes, takes. Now rook d1, bringing the rook into play. Now white is probably worse here, objectively. Black could probably take this pawn or play this and try to make a pass pawn. But black instead takes this pawn. I think black wanted to keep the king safer but it's kind of slow. White brings in more reinforcement with rook g4 now. Queen c6, black is coming here. And then rook h4, maybe black missed this idea. After this, this white suddenly has all their pieces in the attack, and there's gonna be some sacrifice on h5. Takes the knight discovered checks. So things are looking really dangerous for black here. So black decides to pull the plug, queen f5, trading queens. Queen takes f5. Pawn takes f5, but unfortunately this rook is so badly placed. White is able to win a piece here. Rook takes h5. So black 
tries to get some compensation by playing rook takes b2. Now rook h6, rook takes h2. So it looks like black won three pawns for the knight. And black's about to queen. So white needs to attack the king to win this game. So white plays e6. If black takes with the pawn, maybe white can bring the knight in and start an attack. So black decides to attack the rook first and then take the pawn. But now is the moment of truth. I think black really missed this idea. White plays e7. Sacrificing the rook. The move that probably black missed here is knight f7. King d7. And now knight d8. Blocking the rook and wanting to promote to a full queen. Black only has one move here to not let this happen. Rook e2. But now we can block the rook with knight e5. Once again, we're trying to queen. There's no way for the king to actually help out. The knight's clumsy as well. So it looks like this is curtains for black, but black has one move to keep the game going. Rook c2, threatening a checkmate. So white can make a queen, but black's gonna mate. And it's not easy to stop this mate. If you just move your rook or something, black at least has a draw with infinite perpetual checks. So that's the issue for for white here. So you may be wondering, like, what do we do after rook cc2? Well, here is where it starts. Technically, white could make three knights in this position with check, but this is certainly a draw because after something like king h7, there's, I guess there's a check here, but he just goes back and the best we could do is draw. What if he plays this move? Yeah, it's still a draw. Knight f7 check, king here, knight check, there's some weird draws here. Ugh. Okay, so knight on e8 is a draw after rook c2. But the move, this is unbelievable. There's one winning move for white. Knight e6. And this actually, I think it is a brilliant move. The point is, if the knight takes, we can check with the rook. This pushes the king to go. It can't go here because e8 will be a check, right? But what if they played here? Well, now we queen, and this is no longer a checkmate. So we just get to remove our rook with check. So 96, brilliant move. And black can't go anywhere on the 8th rank because white will just promote with check. So black has to play king h7. And now here is where things get crazy. White actually takes a knight and makes a knight. Check. Black has to play this. Black goes here. Check. And check. And mate. Weirdly enough. You don't even need the other knight. So, black plays king h8 here. Now, if white plays knight f7 check, it's a draw. Because somehow... The, the knights are clumsy here. This is a draw. So instead of knight f7, white takes with the other knight. If king h7, then we have knight f8 back. And the difference now is the pawn's gone. So we can, this is actually checkmate. There's no square for the king. So in the game after knight g6 check, black played king g8. And now white plays the final move of the game. Knight e7 check. And black actually resigned here. Unbelievable. So if black plays king h7, you have rook g7 check, king h6, knight f5 check, king here, and knight f4 checkmate. And this honestly, it is one of the most insane games I have seen. And the fact that knight promotion was the best move makes it even speeder.